Hello, welcome to another landscape oil painting demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy. And the painting I'm bringing you today, I'm calling Morning Waves. I think it's a, uh, I'm going to go with 7 by 14 here. I don't think it's a 6 by 12. I can usually tell by looking at my hands. Uh, I like um, in these, so this, this type of proportion is basically two squares abutted. Um, five by tens, I have boards, um, uh, six by twelves, seven by fourteens, I even have a few eight by sixteens. Um, recently though, I've been kind of working with this eight by fourteen size, but we'll talk about that later. Let's talk about what we're doing here. I'm painting on a nice piece of hardboard. I'm painting a nice, um, I call it a skyscape, but we got some waves and some, some little distant, uh, peninsulas or whatever they are, uh, in the distance and some nice waves. I'm pretty happy with the way this came out. So uh, maybe we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, maybe when we're painting the waves, let's see. Um, painting right now with a, uh, going in with some burn umber. And um, burn umber is great for underpaintings on the hardboard. Uh, it's kind of, it actually, it doesn't always seem that red in mixtures, but you can really see how red it is when you get the transparency from the oil. I'm thinning my uh, my uh, pigment with um, Archival Oils brand Odorless Lean. Um, interestingly, I've had some students lately come into my class that have had the Odorless Classic. I didn't see any difference. I used some of their Odorless Classic. I don't know. I think I don't eat really... I'm not uh, that expert on the difference between the lean medium and the classic medium. Uh, all I can say is I made lots of paintings for a long time using the lean. It works well for me, so I'm not a medium snob. Um, it is a quick drying medium, and that is one thing I've always insisted on. If I'm going to work with a medium, I need that uh, quick drying. Well, it's not always that a, a factor. Um, in fact, a lot of times I try to just leave the painting alone after my initial color session, but. Um, in that drawing session, there are times where I'll do that, uh, uh, do an underpainting slash drawing with the burn number and uh, the quick drying oil, and it'll be dry uh, next day, and that's really what I want. Oh, let's talk about that color I'm mixing on screen right now. So, um, that is, uh, how do you get aqua? Mm. Well, that is a bit of, uh, I'm guessing, phthalo. Um, it could be cobalt or ultramarine. I'm not that helpful. Uh, it looks like Thalo to me. Uh, Thalo would give you the best aqua because it has the mo most greenish propensities in it. But you add a little tiny bit of the cad yellow and white. And if you notice when you first add the cad yellow, it's like green, green, green. And as you bring in the white, it degreenifies it. So that's the only way I know to get aqua. I imagine maybe some pigment, pigment uh, manufacturer out there makes an aqua paint. Uh, I, I don't know. I wouldn't be using it anyway. Um, I don't often get into aqua in my uh, tonalist work, um, but uh, definitely seascapes and things like that, aqua is good. The skyscapes, yeah. Anyway, let's see what else I want to talk about. So, yeah, working with the oil paint here. Now, oh, it, if you're really into this and you say, oh, I wish he would talk more about the colors he's using, da 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 da. All you got to do, this is back in August, I did this. I was on a big terror of doing these uh, demonstration sessions and I lift them all up on the channel. It's the kind of thing you usually only get if you're a member. Um, actually if you uh, join the members area uh, you will see that session going and I do have the reference image. I popped it up at the um, the very fore of that video and a lot of those ones in August I had it down below in the lower right hand corner. I just get tired of that. Uh, mostly because this is my archiving system and I really don't even like sharing my reference to be honest. I've, I've just gotten over myself so I will do it now but um, certainly it's kind of a usually it's a members only kind of thing so um, if you're really into wanting to see the reference and uh, wanting more detailed information about how I create a painting um, it's it's six dollars a month that's pretty cheap. Uh, in fact probably what starboard well a heck, a coffee and a muffin is going to be more than 10 bucks, I guess, these days. So, anyway, there's you can check that out if you want. i um, going to get into a little bit of uh, philosophy now. So, that was just pointing. If you want a lot more mechanics and uh, things like that, uh, members area, it's a two-hour video. Be good to watch. Or, if you're on a shoestring budget, 
um, just go to my channel uh, where the video section is and scroll down to say the August area you'll see a bunch of those I left up and um, it's really the same sort of thing I'm doing over and over again so much of uh, what you do with painting is like that um, the difference is the the colors change the subject matter may change in small or large ways uh, the proportions of the board changes, the size of the board changes, the size of your brush changes. Um, but in my case, the approach is almost always the same. I start with a underpainting slash drawing, and uh, I either let that dry or I'll just jump right into color as I did uh, this day. Uh, and there, I premix my colors a lot of times, uh, and. Um, but I will change those almost immediately. It's just kind of a way of wrapping my head around things. Um, I tend to start in the sky and uh, paint the sky first. Um, and then I proceed down to the ground. In this case, the ground is waves, you know, and some little peninsulas and things. And uh, there you go. That's uh, I, how I go after every painting. Now, oh, the other thing, it changes the amount of time, right? It could be... Uh, I just put one up where if you saw it in the members area, you'd say it took me 45 minutes mm, from start to finish. Um, but also in that members area, there are some that took eight hours. And, uh, ooh, you know, I, I prefer paintings to not take too long. And the thing is, I would rather do lots of paintings, um, have some that are maybe weak. Uh, some are always going to be weak and some are always going to be strong. Um, um, but have things fresh so uh, if I work on things too long they get overwrought distorted overly tight and unpleasant and uh, it's not a good uh, it's not a good look I don't like it so um, and you're gonna be able to do maybe a, a, like okay give me a, a, for instance so this painting in the members area just over two hours right um, do you think I did um, four two-hour paintings in that day no um, that's basically like condensed and compressed attention there. So I can do that uh, one, one a day. Sometimes with the little minis, I can do a couple in a day. I had done a couple. I've been doing these figures, which um, I was going to share on the channel, but YouTube's just all funny. Um, most of the new ones have no actual um, frontal nudity. It's just... Um, rear ends and things like that but I'm pretty proud of what I've been doing and you can get to those uh, very easily by uh, just looking in the description area of this video and you'll see my figure channel and uh, if you do go there uh, kindly leave me a comment or something you know um, but also yeah I was I'd love it if uh, I could just mix everything up on this channel but um, I've been doing the landscape thing so long that I, I guess I'm just gonna keep it pretty much pure in that regard that said though there are some uh, major deviations in the members area where I'll just put up any old video I feel like it sometimes yeah um, but check out that that figures channel and uh, yeah you might really like what I'm doing I really been doing some cool stuff um, I'm pretty interested in it uh, and uh, yeah it's all adding up to uh, stuff for these uh, artisans fairs coming up for me yeah uh, which these were sort of intended and intentional to uh, to this uh, New Zealand audience out here that's my hope anyway um, and it's not like I'm exactly pandering I mean it was uh, in line with uh, what I felt like doing and that's something you got to follow I think um, there's a season for every part of uh, your process every Every don't uh, get too hung up in forcing yourself to do things. Um, I hopefully I didn't say this in the last video, but I tend to work on these these themes, and um, one of the big themes that uh, I'm always about is this. Um, it doesn't matter what you do, but you must do it. You must do something. So if you want to get to be a better painter. Um, it doesn't matter if you paint seascapes, it doesn't matter if you paint animals, it doesn't matter what you paint. Um, what matters is that you have to paint all the time though, otherwise you won't get better. You can buy infinite books, you can um, uh, you can watch infinite videos, uh, you can buy endless tubes of paint and the very finest brushes, and you can read uh, 
um, forum posts about the miraculous miracle medium of the masters that will make your paintings masterful, you know. Um, but all of that really isn't going to add up to better work. The only way that there will be better work is by making a lot of paintings but I've touched on that a lot so I won't I won't harp on that um, I do want to say like I'm going into a bit of a redo phase now which I try to avoid getting into because once I start grabbing old paintings and fixing them up um, you know I know actually I will say that I do know not to overdo it um, even if you're looking at a painting and you're going, hmm, I didn't do so well there. Maybe I should fix it. You know, it's years later, but leave leave some of that alone. Just leave it. You know, it's, um, you know, maybe it'll be for the art historians or the museum or, or the guy or gal writing a book about your um, your life and your art. You know, <laughs> now, that could be a vanity. It could be an, uh, an illusion. But if you're not uh, if you're not working uh towards uh, something like um uh, that you know whether it happens or not it's really beside the point you know uh, i would say uh, well do it anyway what the heck but uh personally uh i would love uh nothing more than um there to be retrospectives of my work a hundred years in the future you know like this i've got this book of um a retrospective of constable's work you know and there's a all his amazing studies in there and stuff and it was comprehensive you know i don't know how they did it but they they tracked down almost everything he ever did that was still in existence and uh, and had a huge show and put this book together and it's an amazing book uh i'd love for something well i won't be around so it doesn't actually matter but while i'm here um i'm trying to make a mark i'm trying to create things that are beautiful worthwhile and pursuing mastery right and uh pursuit of mastery is its own reward i think oh hey i, th I mentioned i would talk about waves a little bit okay so um yeah, one of the places i would hang out would be santa cruz uh, california i had family down there um and we'll go buy art supplies there and i remember pretty uh, kind of shortly after starting my journey as a uh, landscape painter um, I'll go to this very, very nice art store there. Um, forget the name of it off the top of my head. It might, Lens, I think, is what it was called. Um, with a Z. A great art store. Uh, there was a lady there, uh, of course, you know, who works in art stores. A lot of times it's artists, painters. Um, she had one of her paintings up, and I was showing her one of my, my things I brought, you know, and she was a good painter. She looked at it and says, oh, you're working with a limited palette, you know, she picked that up. Um, but she was a wave painter. See, I get to my point. I always do. Uh, one of these people that does these brilliant, dramatic paintings of just basically waves with the sunset or something, and the, the, the light's coming through the wave, and it's beautiful and translucent and all these amazing colors and there's a total mastery to that and I remember talking to her about that and saying wow and she's like oh I studied with this guy and this guy or gal and um, they're the master wave painters so that ain't me <laughs> I'll never be me but I always think of that lady when I paint some waves I'm painting some waves here uh, and I think I did pretty good so for my part I mean the only thing I could pass on you is stay loose stay loose because waves ain't going to be tight they're constantly changing so you want to kind of pop something down and then just leave it alone you know um and for the most part in these skyscapes that's what i've done across the boards i just lay it down and leave it alone you know um and that's why they go pretty quickly um it seems it went very quickly you know compared to uh my regular landscapes uh, the uh, skyscapes take less time but um our you know, quite beautiful and uh, I really like doing them I, I'm not sure when I get back into them like when I'm in a phase like that uh, it seems like I won't be stopping um, you know but you know I did I got into minis I'm doing these figures now um, and you know I've got some reference I'd like to get back into it too so we'll see anyway it looks like we're getting close to the end of this video thank you so much for joining me today I know you have lots of things you could watch on YouTube and uh, hopefully this video has been helpful to you if you feel like you have the uh, ability to support me or help me in any way um, uh, 
please do so. That would be great. Uh, my favorite way to be supported is uh, purchase of a painting. There's a lot of great things up there, and my prices are very good. Yeah. Um, also, there's a membership area. Or if uh, you're, you know, not able to do any of that, just leave me a comment. Let you know you got some out of the video. I really appreciate that, and I really appreciate you. Like I say, I know you have lots of things you could watch, and you spending time with me. Um, it's a blessing, and I really appreciate it. So. Until I come back with another video for your edification and enjoyment, do me a favor, do me a solid. Take good care of yourself, your family, all your loved ones. Stay out of trouble, and God bless you and your family.